two, one. What's happening, everyone? And welcome back to the greatest podcast you've never heard of, MC Podcast, in episode one hundred and twenty-seven, isn't it? Yeah. Hi. Hi, are you, Stephen? Right. Hi, are you anyway? I'm all right, mate. Yeah, I'm all right. I've just woken up, really. <laughs> we sound, yeah, we sound quite tired, I suppose. <laughs> this is the earliest. This is the earliest we've ever done a podcast, even though it's only like a half an hour earlier than normal. I know. It's just because we're doing it on a Saturday rather than a Sunday. It seems different. Oh uh, yeah. But anyway, yeah. so by the time this podcast goes up, it'll be like obviously Monday. So it'll be like one day December. away from Dece- December. So is it okay yeah. to be Christmasy now? Is it is, is this totally <laughs> accepted? Well, I put my I put my tree up like last week. So you you put your tree up in lockdown <laughs> in March. <laughs> I don't know. We put it up last week because just because there's nothing else to fucking do. Like, I, the house is nice <laughs> with Christmas stuff up. I was just like, is, like I'm working in my living room and all, and it's like this is grim. Let's just put this tree up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's the tree up and got some shit. I don't know, and the the amount of trees like I've seen, like the amount of trees I've seen up during November is ridiculous. Now I think everyone's like on that same wavelength to be fair. Like, because even I I put my tree up as well last night, and I always swore to myself I'll never put my tree up in November. Yeah. And just even just this twenty twenty just broke me a wee bit. Just kind of go, I ah, get it up, get it up. Know. Just fucking enjoy it's actually, it. I, it was weird because um, like anyone who's not doesn't have their tree up. I'm like, well, you know, I got your tree up, and then I'm like, fuck, I actually put it up really early. You know, what I mean? <laughs> whereas I would usually be like, fuck me, what? It's like Halloween's just ended. Relax, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know because but, I always yeah. think as well. Like, yeah, you almost like I don't really get. Do you get Christmassy now? Are you in the Christmassy mood now? Mm, no, not really. Like, mm. I don't. Um, I, I don't Same know. Here. I, I try not to watch too many Christmas movies because not not yet anyway because you, there's you only don't a couple that I, I really like yeah yeah and like you like especially if I go down to my mum's house and stuff around Christmas and then like they put on a Christmas movie and I'm like I watched this two days ago you know yeah. what I mean you don't want to be that guy so I'm kind of trying to save the like, good ones what I'm gonna watch and stuff yeah because it, it it's fucking like it's a weird thing like see with movies. You'd watch a really good movie, but you don't watch a really good movie every year. Like, say if you've seen a good movie a year ago, yeah. and then you watch it again, you'd be like, I've just watched this. Yeah, so, like, Christmas comes around really quick, and you start watching the movies in, like, end of November, December, and you're like, I watched this a couple months ago. Yeah, you know, what I mean? and you know <laughs> word by word. That's why I, like, yeah. I almost don't, I almost, when I go to my mum and dad's house during Christmas, and they're watching the Christmas scene movie, because maybe with your family, you don't really watch the movie, do you? You kind of watch yeah, it, you're chatting probably. shit. It's kind of like you're almost like reacting to the movie you're talking shit about it and all too and you're talking shit about like oh remember we watched this back in the day blah 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 so that's why i, I don't mind re-watching christmas movies with my parents and shit or my, with my brothers but when you watch it with your girlfriend or, or in your own apartment you are kind of just watching it going i know every word of this here and you know every scene so it feels like it feel, feels so much longer sometimes you're like am i bore myself with this movie i love you know that way that's why like i don't I'm the same. I try not to watch the big Christmas movies like Die Hard, Scrooge, It's a Wonderful Life. No, them ones are until like December. Like I started watching a few recently, but they're ones I've never would have watched. Like there's this one on Netflix now. Everyone's talking about the Christmas Chronicles. It came out last year, the first one. Or last year or two years ago, and then the the second one came out this year. And I'm like, I'll watch out because I have. It doesn't remind me of like it's not. Like, what's Die Hard? Yeah. yeah, we watch Die Hard and all too. Like, I, I get you in a Christmasy mood. Like, well, these movies don't, so I almost don't really care t- too much about them. I almost like the idea of watching a Christmas movie without actually watching a Christmas movie, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, there's probably there's a lot of shit ones. That's that's the problem as well. Like, probably the same with most films, like the most genres. There's a lot of shit ones. There's probably, <laughs> I, I love Christmas, you know, I love Christmas, but yeah. I would. Hey, there's probably more shite Christmas movies yeah. than actually good Christmas yeah. movies. And even the really good ones that you love, they're not like, fuck me, you need to watch this movie. It's the best movie I've ever seen. They're just like nice to watch. You know I mean? Yeah. But there is some good ones out there. Like, you know, like, but it all depends on how you view it. Because, like, I, I actually found this website. Well, it wasn't the website. It was Rotten Tomatoes, but they had like a, like a, a what? page. I've never heard of it. Yeah, it's a really small, like independent review. <laughs> it's, it's, it's getting up. It's growing. We might ask them to come on the podcast. I mean, mm-hmm. shit them, shit them out on this podcast. Uh, they had like a page, just like the worst rated Christmas movies of all time. No something out there, mm-hmm. and like the top ten were all like my favorite ones. <laughs> <laughs> they were not not my favorite ones per se, but ones I liked, like like uh four Christmases. Like what else was there? Like Christmas, Christmas with the cranks and all. To I me, mean, I like these. <laughs> But when you really think about them, they are shit movies. Like, yeah, 
the really good Christmas movies are like the like the, the highest rank. Like I watched uh, like a video online, like ranking the top Christmas movies of all in time based on Rotten Tomatoes score, and the top ten are like basically the top ten, like the obvious ones, yeah. like, like Scrooge, It's a It's a Wonderful Life, Die Hard. So all the obvious Christmas movies that everyone watches is the same. All like it's the same for everyone. Yeah. No one really, yeah. no one really tells you about. Here, you watch this Christmas movie. Like, yeah, I've seen that. Or, or you, at least you know about it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And it's always hard to get a, a good modern. Like, is there a good modern Christmas movie? Like, say yeah, within no. the last ten years or something. It's probably the same with horror films as well. Like, if you like, when you go down to watch a movie on Halloween, there's a lot of shit horror films that come out. You end up watching like a classic from like the eighties. You know what I mean? You end up watching like Halloween or something. You end up. I don't know. It's it's a difficult one. Like Elf is probably one of the most modern Christmas. That was movies, like 2012. Like, yeah. oh, sorry, sorry uh, 2003 or four, wasn't it? Yeah. So it's like fucking nearly 20 years old, and you're like, oh, that's like the good modern that's, one. That's a like, modern one, yeah. Yeah, it was like fucking eight when that came out. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's it's different. It's it because that the reason because of that there is 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 because when you're a kid, that's when you watch these movies. You know, what I mean, yeah. even though like. Like Home Alone, for example, like Home Alone came out when in the nineties, isn't it? Yeah. So when we were kids and we were believing in Santa and getting excited for Christmas, that was the movie. That was like the modern movie. Why now it is like we're not as excited, even though we do enjoy Christmas, we're not as excited as we were when we were kids. So everything's not new to us. You know, we we're aware of the fucking the thickness of Christmas, like in the the issues of Christmas and all too. You know, and that's the bad right. thing we get growing up in it. You start realizing how like. I fake it all is in it sometimes. It's shit. You're like, Dad, I don't want to. I don't want to know about it. I just want to enjoy my fucking hot chocolate and Bailey's and watch fucking Home Alone two, Lost in New York. Hey, yeah. just leave me alone. Leave me alone. I don't want to know yeah. about the homeless guys in the street. I don't want to know about it there. I don't want to know about. It. I want to enjoy myself. Yeah, yeah, I know. I get what you mean. And then you, obviously a lot of people struggle around Christmas, but like, I don't know. This, this, this year, year especially. This year's a tough year because Fuck I don't me. really. It's hard to know. What like obviously there's no bars like Christmas to me is about four or five nights out before Christmas. You know what I mean? Like you always yeah. have like we would usually go out the night out. We yeah. Usually go out with your work ones. You usually do this, do that. See people like you, you, you kind of have like a list of people you're trying to see before Christmas. Yeah. And then you kind of go all the bars and stuff. And then this year like they're obviously they're probably not going to open. And it's true. It's true because but... we talked about it before. We, we we've said Belfast is a great place to live in terms of like like the cost of living here because if, you, if you, you and your partner work in like a, a restaurant or a bar full time you haven't that's like actually a good salary coming in so all these people who we would have considered okay of money are now fucked with money you know what i mean like bars restaurants cafes and shit like all these people who weren't ever like on like like struggling at christmas yeah struggling at christmas in terms of ban everyone kind of struggles at christmas because you, you spend more don't you but the idea that you always have a wee bit of money to survive, at least pay your bills, that was never a, 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 an issue for this this sector or these workers. But now it is, and that's like, like you kind of just feels. That's sorry. why I've always kind of never been like. See, when it comes to like lockdowns, the second lockdowns, like I understand it. No, I would always I, I try to follow the rules the best I can, but. I don't want to be the guy who's working from home and is okay going, we need to lock everything down. And that means yeah. like, well, you do realize that means the people who work in cinemas, bars, restaurants, they don't have a job. Yeah. Like, yeah. But like that, see if I'm okay though, I'm just you're, like, you're sitting there in your house camping. Like something I remember on the news the other day, I was fucking raging. It was a couple of weeks ago, actually. There was, just, there was this woman on and she was like getting into fear about like the lockdown and what you thought of it. It was it during a time when we had just opened up again, mm-hmm. but like there was rules in place that meant that like, she couldn't see her mum. So she was like, "Oh, this is ridiculous! Like the bars and restaurants are open, but I can't like like I'm trying to work from home and I've got my kid, um, and I can't like leave my kid down to my mum's house to get babysitted while I work." And I'm like, "But I was like, but basically what you're saying is all these other people should close their businesses and not go to work so you can work from home." So your mum can mend your kid. I'm like, do you yeah. realise how selfish you're sounding? Like you're literally like, I understand you're probably saying like off for the fire, but like by saying like this all should lock down, so I and then I should be able to give my kid to my mum mm-hmm. and like close the bars and restaurants. That like six thousands of people out of work. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's like people don't even think like that. People don't. I mean, we're all we're all selfish, not in that way, aren't we? I think we and you have talked about the, the the lockdown before and. You know we're happy enough doing the lockdown because our jobs allow us to do that and stuff, and we know it's by it's for the greater good. 
But then there's people who can't do lockdown, like mentally, like no, like need need the like the support of other people, like on a daily basis for the for the for their mental for the mental side of it all, but also the financial side of it all. I, I was in a cafe the other day, and it was uh, it was like a restaurant, like, and it's so coffee. I don't want to name the name of it, and I heard people talking, and they were saying about like they don't know if they're going to be paid over Christmas during this two week mm-hmm. lockdown. And they don't know if they're going to be opening before Christmas, regardless if the government allow them to. And I was sitting there, cheer, very cheery, getting two coffees, about to go for a walk with my dog. Me, all my brothers had their jobs, were all fine. Like my girlfriend, even Scott, actually got Scott like a, got an even better job during this whole lockdown. Like so she's actually got her dream job and all too. So and like, like even though, or my family haven't been affected by COVID in terms of like being sick or dying from it. And in terms of the part of my sister, she worked in a restaurant. She's kind of affected, but part of my there, we're all fine. So you almost could go by, go through your day, or go through this whole period, not really current, or not really understanding what people are actually going through. And I just, yeah. had, I, I was almost like I wasn't involved in the conversation. They were having the conversation. I was waiting for the coffee, and I just, I was like almost like I got step into their reality, going, "Geez, because Christmas is even for us, even though we actually." Are, are, are on good money and have good money it is like you do spend a lot of money you're, and then you, you start worrying about mm, just to make sure I have enough money taken over so it covers this nut but imagine your job tell you tonight or today or tomorrow mm-hmm. here Stephen no job tomorrow like no job next week yeah. no pay you go what, what the fuck would you do like I know you ha- really, I, I, I know, I know people pay- don't really like have a lot of money behind them either. You know, no, I mean? a lot of people don't like it. It's the way we're kind of brought up now, and the way like the society is saving money is like you don't really need to because you can yeah. get like loans and you know, like a lot of people do live within their means, but a lot of people don't. So when something like this happens, it only takes a matter. It's like a paycheck or two before you're actually behind the curve. Exactly. And especially things like new PlayStation comes out, right? And like, imagine you have a kid who is asked Santa for that PlayStation, and they're so hard to get. Like, I don't know something about the PlayStation thing. It, it came out. It's five hundred pound, right? All these people are like buying them up and stuff, which is fair enough. Like, you're entitled to go and buy whatever you want. But then they're like firing them on eBay and selling them for like eight nine hundred pound. I'm just like, I, I'm just like, but like, fair enough. <laughs> like, it's not your fault. It's actually it's Sony's fault for not having enough PlayStations. But it's like, it's st- I, I wouldn't feel. I wouldn't do that because I was just like, this is a bit grim. Like, this is, I'm going to, I'm going to take eight, nine hundred pound off someone because their kid wants this for Christmas and they have no idea. They can't tell them that we can't get it because they believe in Santa. Like, yeah. they think they can just get it. I'm like, this is grim. I know. <laughs> and it's also like, the, in the way the websites were announcing them, like, I, I was trying to get a PlayStation for my wee nephew and stuff. And uh, my sister asked me to go on his website because my sister doesn't really know. That's saying she's yeah, yeah. Like, she's savvy in terms of going online now, but she doesn't know like about creating accounts for certain websites and shit. So we we're trying to do that for her, and we we're she was lucky because we had like there was a few of us doing it for for her. Mm-hmm. But like, what happens if your ma's like say like a working fucking nine to five, <laughs> five days a week, like say in her thirties doesn't really know how to do all this shit, and their kid asks for Santa, like asks for a PlayStation Five off Santa. We have this fucking whiz kid who fucking knows the algorithms and fucking can but get uh, order five PlayStations offline and sell them for double the price and all too. Like you're just basically something during this time you see you see the worst in people, don't you? That's the bad yeah. thing. People people people, yeah. people want to make quick a quick buck or quick. But for me, I always like. Like even it's like, that's why I'd never been a big gambler. Like I know you, you, you would do a few bets and all too. For me, I just never really like. I don't see the benefit of like risking a tenner just to win twenty. You know what I mean? I'm like yeah, yeah. for me, so like so the idea of buying a PlayStation for five hundred pound and selling it for seven hundred pound. I know it's two hundred pound. It's yeah. obviously two hundred pound. Two hundred pound. But like, not, it's too much hassle. <laughs> too much hassle, and it doesn't sit well with me as well. Like I wouldn't like I, I wouldn't want to do it. I mean, I'm just a better person, Steve. <laughs> that's it. You're just, you're just super man. No, I got. I sometimes, like, I sometimes like, maybe yeah. once like every couple of weeks, and like I would put a fiver on like two or three games, and it's, it's, it is more to keep an interest. That's like. Like if I win a hundred quid, it's like happy days. But if I don't, it's okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I'm all, I would game, maybe gamble about a ten or a month. Yeah. You know what I mean, it's like it's the same as fucking getting a scratch card. Like it's just, and I haven't like I don't know. It is. It's not about making the money for me. It's just literally like if say like Saturday, crack? there's about ten, there's about five games on that you do not give a fuck about. And you're like, yeah. oh god, there's no good football. On. Then you fire on a couple of bets, and you're like, I, I do want Southampton to win here. Or, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're like you're you're kind of cheer on. You're, 
Yeah. Like, if Southampton are playing Crystal Palace, I do not give a shit about that match. But if Southampton win that match and I win, like, 50 quid, then, yeah, yeah I'm going to occur. You know what I, mean? I think you're, you're, like, the exception to the rules because I think you could stop and walk away if shit got bad if you lost your job. That would be a thing you would, okay, no more, yeah. no more, bad, no more gambling for me. The bad thing I didn't gamble gambling. the whole way during lockdown. See, when football stopped, yeah. Uh, I was like, there's no football. I was like, well, we're going to bat on, we'll go bat, bat on snooker. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just did. <laughs> like, I, didn't, I didn't place a bet for about six months. Really? The bad thing about gambling, like, my dad's the same. He would do a wee bet when he used to go to the bars every Saturday. He would do, he used to go out with his brothers every Saturday. He would throw, uh, like, a tenner or what, a fiver on, like, a random. I know what he would do. He would literally go to, like, the championship in the lower leagues yeah. and pick random teams. Like, he wouldn't look at the teams. Mm-hmm. He would just pick them. He says it's a bit of crack. It gets me interested in the in the lower leagues as well, and it gets you an interest in the clubs. And like you know, they're for, like sometimes you actually realize, oh, I fucking I bet them last week. They've lost two games in a row now. Like you kind of understand the the league a bit more. He says, but like I think if push comes to shove, I think if he would give it up, no bar. Like is like he 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 hasn't gambled during the whole lockdown as well. But I think used to are an exception of the rules because but there's people you go down to these places uh, like bookies and stuff and they're sitting there probably. all day booking on like batting on like electronic fucking or virtual yeah. fucking dog racing or horse racing like geez how bad is that being and we look at them going what the fuck are you doing yourself like but actually it's like it's, anything it's, it's, it's yeah, addiction it's like, you know what I mean like they can't stop horses? doing that because it's like you could take like any substance or any like you could take like we drink but we're fine we could easily not drink but then there's yeah. an alcoholic yeah, it's just it's the same with gambling. You have people there, who just gamble every now and again, and then there's a not gambling at it. It's also you have that addi- addictive personality, don't you? Yeah, and then, we all are. We all probably are. I, it's like that's what I was thinking. Yeah, you like I always ask myself. Shit, no? Yeah, I always ask myself like now and again, like what am I addicted to? Sometimes I cross it crosses my mind about alcohol because I do drink probably more than the average person. But I'd do it with someone, like me and my girlfriend, we'll have like a bottle of wine, like two glasses of wine each, you no know, during the week, you no know, on, on a random Wednesday and stuff. But we like it. And I thought to myself, like, if this wasn't an option, would I be okay? It's never came it never it's never became a problem, so it's never became a reason for not doing it. But I've went days yeah. and weeks without drinking before, so I always feel, feel feel like I'm okay with it. But then I asked myself, is there anything in life that I'm addicted to? Like, do you ever yeah. Do you ever ask yourself that, or, or is there anything you like that you think you're addicted to? Like you could not give up. I don't know. I actually, when it comes to like coffee, drink, and things like that, I consumption have, like easily. I, I could easily give up coffee. Like yeah. I went, I think I went about four or five months without taking a drink of coffee just well, yeah, to see if me. I needed it or not. No. And then uh, alcohol over the lockdown as well. Like just because I've never been a big drinker in the house. Like I would, ne- we never really drink in the house. We do yeah. a wee bit every now and again. But like I like when, when I associate drink with going out. Like I would go to bars quite a lot when they're open. Like I would go out with my dad. I would do, like that's when I associate yeah. drinking. So when they closed, I probably went about three months without taking a drink. Yeah. That's just not even intentionally. So. Uh, I think I'm okay with that stuff, gambling, drinking, all that other stuff. It's probably the cocaine. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> the heroin's are, you're always on that heroin, fuck's sake. Pardon, pardon, I'm addicted. heroin and cocaine. I'm addicted to learning. <laughs> I'm addicted to being a better person than most people. It's, it's just yeah, nice. Yeah. I just love being, I actually. I levitate I above people sometimes. I'm probably addicted to the, I'm probably addicted to the gym. In a way, like I'm probably addicted to thinking about the gym. Okay. I'm addicted to like, like I don't know, like changing my workout plan and all up, and like I don't know what, what I'm eating, what I'm not eating, and then mm. I go two, three days eating like shit. Oh my god, why did I do that? I need to get back on to like eating this and stuff. Okay, and then like, yeah. I, I, that's what I'm probably addicted to. To be fair, that's a good thing to be addic- addicted to, though. You know, like your health, your fitness and stuff. Well, not be, but you, I don't think you're OTT by fitness, like because no, do, I'm not. No, you know, so you're addicted. To do drink and all, do eat a lot of shit. Yeah, yeah. But you know, um, I'm addicted to like. I think I you like know crack. If you're fucking yeah. addicted I, to all I, that shit, no, I like going to the gym. That's one thing that I like doing. And if say I couldn't go for like a couple of months, the fact that I can't go for two weeks here, like as a something I went oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, do you know what I mean that's probably the only thing that I went fuck's sake. You I know? think, yeah, I know. I never, I you know me. I'm not. I like going to the gym recently, especially yeah. since lockdown kind of eased there. But then since they closed again, I'm kind of like, hey, I'm annoyed, but I don't, I don't care too much. You know, what I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I think there was probably a stage in your life that you were addicted to the gym. Though. Yeah, about sixteen to twenty or nineteen or something. Mm-hmm. 
I was ridiculous. I was going like four or five times a week. Yeah. I had no I was no crack, that's probably why. I had nothing to do. I was bored. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that, yeah. at that age you have so much like so much energy and stuff and you're so I always yeah. felt the back. You don't have anything else to do. You don't have a job. Hi, hi, why? Are you working like part time or something? Or like you're not? What are you thinking you know? about? I was working like in the bars and then I was actually doing my A levels and just like A levels as well. So I was mm-hmm. like, I, I was pretty busy. Ain't you? Busy enough. Yeah, but like I think it's more like I was more superficial back then. Like I was very self conscious of how I looked and stuff, like my face and everything. And so I felt if I worked out as much as possible, this will like, you know, make me feel bad about myself. It did to a certain degree, but long term it wasn't because then. Because even though I was I was in pretty decent shape back in the day, and there was always someone better, like bigger than you, stronger than you, anyway. So uh, you're you're you're, you're like, I always felt like, what am I actually chasing here? I thought I was chasing happiness through working out, mm-hmm. and I, and you can't achieve happiness through working out. So there was no end goal for me. So I was just working out four or five times a week, doing all that protein shit, running as much as I could doing fucking sit-ups every night before I went to bed just be- because I thought there was going to be a point in this yeah, be that, be, okay, I reached it. And once I realized it was never an end goal, people work there because it's better for your fitness, better for your mental health and stuff. Then I was like, okay, I can do this, but I don't need to do it as much as I'm doing it now. Like the way I work right now, I, I still probably work out. I go to the gym like two, three times a, a, a week and I probably you know, go for walks, runs, sit, no, do a wee bit of work out in the house. So I probably do like four or five times a week. I do that. And for me, that's that's perfect. But what I was doing beforehand was just ridiculous. It was, it was so, I just wasn't happy. That's what it was. I think yeah, it was just like yeah. really down about myself and I thought the gym could help. And it did help a wee bit, but it didn't really help. I was I probably, wanted. I remember. I remember back in the day when I used to live with Mark and Jared, hmm. and obviously they were a bit older. I think Mark was already kind of out of that uni stage and into his full time job. He was like twenty five, and I was like twenty one or something. <clears> and I was like, that was a stage where I was doing a degree, and I was working in the just part time in a shoe shop, and I had the most free sort of free time that I had. And I went to the gym like fuck, and I was probably in the best shape I've ever been in. And I was also like, I was skinnier. But so like I had abs and all, and I, like I looked good. Do you know what I mean? I knew I looked good. I was like, I actually am in good shape. Like I was, and like Mark would always comment on, like, Jesus, like look at the shape you're in, like fucking hell. Yeah. And then I, I like and he would always used to be like, um, you know, I'll, I'll come to the gym with you. And he used to try to come, and he used to miss workouts and stuff. And in my head, I was like, oh man, come on, you need to Lazy. just be committed and stuff. Like come on. Yeah. And then he, he used to say like. Mate, just wait until you actually have a full time job and you can't go to the yeah. gym at ten o'clock in the morning. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I was just like, oh, no, mate, this is what I like doing. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm this like, is I'm me. This. Yeah, this yeah. is me. For and life. then I got a full time job and realized, fuck <laughs> that. I was literally like, what the fuck? I was like, yeah, why? Like, I'm not going to the gym. I'm not getting up at half five in the morning, going to the gym, going to work, coming home. I'm like, and then I would go through periods where I'd still do that, mm-hmm. but I would just, I just was not as consistent as I was back then. And to me, it was just free time, and I was like judging. Mark because he was full time. He wasn't. Stuff. Yeah, and I, I got to his days. I was like, he's right. I was like, yeah. the, the way more important things like h- him and his career at that stage was more important than me and my part time job going to the gym. You know what I mean? I know, and it's it's also strange as well. Like when I look at the workout I do now in comparison to the workout I used to do back in the day, I, I used to do. My brothers always make fun of me, but like you used to work at your glory muscles. Like I used to do a lot yeah, of yeah, yeah. curling, just do curl fucking. Like we small bits of curls, big heavy bar curls and shit, not there. So your arms look a wee bit bigger, just constantly sit ups and all too. But it came to doing pull ups or fucking dips. You're like, oh, don't do that, man. Oh, shit, don't do that there. Do the fucking, do the things for I uh, squats and shit, deadlifts. Like that was like, like, I remember working out in the gym, like for a couple of years at this point. And the guy said to me, here, we should start doing squats. I'm like, what are those? <laughs> what are the squats? Yeah. And we tried to do them. And we, we, were, we were so good at everything else. Like we were good at bench. I think I was doing 100K on bench mm-hmm. or 90 comfortably, 100 struggle, struggling. And he's like, we should do squats and squat. Like you know yourself, if you don't do squats, yeah, you can't, yeah, can't, can't do squats, do can't do them. Mm-hmm. So we were barely left in 20K, 30K squats. We're going, oh my God, so hard. And we like, Let's just give up on this here because we're struggling. Yeah. That's but, something uh, as well. Like I, I, I'll like as I got a bit older, I completely changed. 
like I follow something called Start and Strength. I would recommend like anyone who wants to get into like lifting weights to be strong. Like mm-hmm. lifting weights to be strong, not nothing to do with how you look. Yeah. Just trying to get stronger. And the whole point of it is it improves your everyday life. It's nothing to do with like you don't curl or anything. You don't do you don't train your calves. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Like you just like your forearm curls it all. Yeah. It's not like the way the guy in Start and Strength explains it. He says this is how he explains it. He's like, This is the way gyms are. It's like you kind of you go to work, you you pull into the gym parking lot at half five with your gym bag. You go in, you get changed. You know, you go on the treadmill for a bit. You do some lap pull downs. You pick up some twenty. He's American, so you pick up some twenty pound dumbbells, wave them around a bit, and then you get in the sauna and then you leave. Going, I've accomplished something. Yeah. He's like, that's not what you do in my gym. When you come yeah. to my gym, you train. Like yeah. you squat, you deadlift, you bench. You're giving your numbers what you lift, and last time you lifted such such amount. This time you need to lift a wee bit more. And every single time you come in, you lift a wee tiny bit more and you're just constantly improving. And it's about yeah. like, it's about like your life, like you're improving your life. You're trying to get stronger. And that's what I've kind of focused on. Like, and I've noticed as well, like most people in the gym, they look amazing. But as you say, they can't squat, they can't yeah. deadlift. They, they can't. And for me, I was like, why, why am I like in this gym four years and I can't squat two plates on a bar? I'm like, what am I doing? Like, mm-hmm. like this is crazy. Like, yeah. Like they, he looks like that guy probably looks way better than me. Like he's got abs, he's got bigger arms and stuff, but he can't squat the bar. Yeah. Like, like it's that's not right. Like what yeah. are you doing here? <laughs> yeah. But I think it's it's all depend all depends on what like why are you doing it for? Like you know what I mean? Like a lot yeah. of people do it for the superficial aspect of looking good in a photo or yeah. looking good in a t-shirt. I mean, if if that's what you want to do, then that's what you want to do. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you can't. And it's not to say that. If you just do glory muscles, do sit ups, and do bar curls, you're gonna get you're gonna get arms and abs like that. that like that. Like uh, people who don't squat or don't do like deadlifts and shit, but still look in really good shape. That still takes a lot of dedication. No, of course it does. Yeah, have abs these days, especially when over when you're over the age of thirty. Like it's fucking tough. Like you need to properly like eat well, not drink as much, do a lot of fucking sit ups, a lot of fucking cardio as well. Like so, to have abs, it still takes dedication. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, no, that's, those, a bad, but it's and just, that's a bad thing. Because you go to the gym, there's so much different, different sorts, sorts, sorts of people. There's people who are fucking really into it. You know, they're every day doing like the squats, doing the deadlifts and not to have the fucking powder for their hand. It probably makes the zero yeah. difference. Like, but they have powder no, in their hand. No, it does. It does make a difference. <laughs> yeah. It helps your grip. Yeah. <laughs> but we got weaker. It's like you put like, like, gloves and all and people have all this shit. You're like, mm, yeah, okay, calm down. Like, then you have people who are just, <laughs> who are just trying to be healthier because their doctor told them. Yeah. I mean, go to the gym and run a bit more. But I just think the yeah. idea of people comment on them, people like people. If you come to the gym and you work out for twenty minutes, do a ten minute run and ten minutes on weights, and the weights are probably small and all too, and you leave, it's and you feel, like, <laughs> you feel like you can't be something. Then fucking fair dues, you did that. A lot of people don't do that. Mm-hmm. A lot of people just lie in yeah. bed and watch Netflix all day, or lie in the yeah. sofa and watch Netflix and drink and shit. And Burley, and that's that's how I was thinking as well. But then for me, like personally, I was like, right, I'm paying for a gym membership. I'm going, like, I may as well try to get the most out of this. Like, yeah, to me, I was like, what's the point in me, like, in two years' time going, right, I've been in this gym for two years, but the basic movements that are, I associate with the gym, I actually can't really do. So yeah. to me, it's like, I may as well learn to do that. Like, yeah, yeah, no, you know, you're right. You're make right. me better. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. There's one thing I really want to do more in a gym, but I'm too embarrassed to do it is pull ups. Mm-hmm. Any sort of pull ups. And I was just like, I know the only way I'm going to get better doing pull-ups is by doing pull-ups. pull-ups. But I don't want to do pull-ups because I can't do pull-ups. So I was like, I'm like, fuck sake. Uh, it's like, is there, a, is there an easy way to learn how to do pull-ups? Like, without doing like pull-ups? You can get like a lot of, you can get like a lot of bands and stuff, like banded pull-ups and what have they you. Can, they can assist you, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they yeah. assist you. Or usually assisted one. But I think with pull-ups, it is just the case of trying to get a bit do stronger. Just like, it's that. like... <sighs> Like, yeah, they're it tough, is. Like, they're trying tough. To do and there, there's this like new workout a lot of people are trying not to because I know uh, Patrice Evra, no, the, the former Manuel mm-hmm. fullback, he uh, he does it and he is like working out with no weights. And the guy, yeah. Triore, you no, know, for uh, Wolves, the winger for Wolves, <laughs> yeah, he, he doesn't lift weights. No, he does like. I okay. guess he doesn't like, but he definitely does like. No, but like the, I was reading about it, not too, and it's all about like like doing pull ups and all. So you're you're lifting your own yeah. weight. You're still lifting weights. But you're lifting your own weight yeah. instead of actually lifting weights, like just doing curls and squats mm-hmm. and all. Too, like you're basically it's all about pull ups and dips and all. Too, and I was like, that is because a pull up and a push up and like dips mm-hmm. are like probably one of the best things you can do for yourself. 
You know what I mean? But people almost overlook push-ups because they think, oh, so basic. So people are doing these fucking big fucking weight squats with a fucking, with their leg on a bench and their fucking back leg on a fucking <laughs> dumbbell so they can get their fucking butt a wee bit bigger. You know what I mean? It's always complex natures and sometimes the basic ones like squats, fucking pull-ups, it's like, push-ups are the yeah, best thing like, for you. One thing that wrecks me is like, uh, the problem is a lot of personal trainers don't really, they don't need to know how to train, if you know what I mean. Because what they are is someone who dedicates their whole life. Like, they're, like they have so much free time. Yeah. They're also, a lot of them are genetically gifted. Like, you, you know yourself, there's some people who are just big. Some people mm-hmm. just have big, massive arms and legs have never done anything. So like a lot me. of trainers. Yeah, like me and stuff, yeah. yeah. A lot of trainers are genetically gifted. And they're also on steroids, right? So <laughs> it's, kind of, it's kind of one of those things. Well, they are. Like, everyone knows. You can tell who's on steroids. Like, you know, you know, most people know who's on steroids, right? Really? So the, the problem is with this, right? They... See, because you've got your genetics, you're on steroids. No matter what workout you do, you're going to get big. You're mm-hmm. going to grow because you look at the advantages you have. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't work for the skinny seventeen-year-old that you're training. So you actually have never really you, you've never needed to get an amazing workout plan because yeah. like you've you've got you're so much. So you see, like someone who's like seventeen, you have them doing like a fucking say seventeen and skinny, and you put them on a bench, and you're like right. You're gonna do like incline fucking chest curls, <laughs> like incline, right? Because what this will do, this will talk tar- like bear in mind, this person doesn't have a chest, mm-hmm. but this will target your upper pack. And you're like, right, well, what does he bench, right? Oh, he, he just benches the bar. And I'm like, right, we'll teach him to bench 20, 40, 60, yeah. 80. If you get that kid to bench 100 kilograms in the next year, he will not have to worry about his upper chest. His chest yeah. will be massive. Like, yeah. you can't. Like strong as big, you can't bench a hundred. You've never seen anyone who's benched a hundred kilograms who's got a small chest. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So I'm like, yeah. it's that. It's the basics. It's like, oh, we're going to do this. We like split squat for your. Well, what does he normally squat? He squats twenty at the minute. Well, if you train him, just if you teach him to squat a hundred, his legs are going to be big. Mm-hmm. But that's that, the like, difference that's between the it's basics. That's, like that, that's the difference between a good PT and a bad PT. In yeah. it, they can like reprogram their workout, the associate or to. Yeah, the associate that person rather than just doing a generic worker that kind of fits all. You know what I mean? Because they want to, they want to keep the business. If you're still seeing a PT after six months, why? Yeah. Like they should. They their job is to teach you how to work out. Yeah. So once you're ta- once that you're taught how to do the exercises properly. Yeah, but then I'll pull like, like the idea of how the PT because it motivates them. It's like going to the gym. Like, I know. Like, yeah. like, <laughs> but I, that's fair enough. You must have money to burn in because like, why would you want to spend? I bring a mate with me. Like why would you want to spend thirty um, quid a, a session for someone to motivate you? <laughs> it's crazy in a thirty fucking quid. Like the, uh, I mean, like if, I know a few PTs. Like, but fuck me, I would not do that. Like that's yeah. like. You're st- uh, that's on top of actually you're paying your gym membership so it's probably like say yep. 20 to 30 pound gym membership and then you're paying like 30 quid a week Jeez, mm-hmm. that's literally like some, oh, some of them some PTs quid. are class like some PTs are class and they know but a then, lot of stuff but then you have these a PTs are so like, just yeah an online course and they've yeah. just learned how to work out themselves yeah. and they probably don't even do a lot of stuff right and then like I remember I seen a guy in pure gym who was he was Bring it, he got this girl over to do like a pull up and he started doing the pull up. He was trying to show how to do it and he couldn't do it, right? And then he started like, he, he literally is like, right, so this is what we're doing. And I was watching him and he couldn't do the pull up. And then he started like moving his stomach in and out as if he was training his abs. And she was like, all oh, right, okay. He's like, he's like, all oh, right, so this is an ab exercise. But I was like, you told her it was a pull up. <laughs> but he, oh, he's just realized he can't do one. And now he's just, he has this girl just dangling from the, the bar, just moving her stomach. <laughs> I know. and that's the <laughs> bad thing about like because if i was going to do a pt or if i wanted a pt trainer i you really would look at the person's physique the biggest yeah because like if they're in the better shape, that means they must know more even though that's never the case never you know what i mean case. but it would be because i always think if you're a pt and you're small and fat not small sorry i don't, mm-hmm. don't want to say small but you mean small and built like you're not really yeah. muscly but you're fat but you could have all the knowledge of like yeah working out and like every sort of muscle all your anatomy and physiology all that shit all that keeper but if you're like small and fat like no one's gonna pick you yeah. like no one wants that everyone wants to fuck you do you have know. to look a certain way like yeah and yeah i mean like so it's even though we understand that that's not always the case we would still if we were picking a pt we probably still go for the biggest one anyway yeah well i would for me now i would go for someone who 
I wouldn't I wouldn't let anyone shame me who can't squat like well over like 160, 170 kilograms. Like maybe, that's maybe, why maybe they just don't want to. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah no, that, that's fine. Like, but it's so, just for my, my training preference. So for like you, I know you like you're trying to build strength and all too, so is what is what is there's no end goal for you squatting no. or like deadlifting, it's gonna keep no. going, keep going until you, you reach the until I can't. Yeah, until and so what happens is like you get the there's like a novice phase where you can kind of the way starting strength to describe it is if you're a young healthy male right in your twenties or whatever, as long as you eat enough food and sleep enough, there's no reason why you can't add two and a half kilograms to your squat every workout, right? For a period until you can't. Do you know what I mean? So say you can do that for maybe two months, maybe three months, maybe you can get to four months, right? So say you come in and you're squatting 60, work so three sets of five, right? For 60 yeah. kilograms. And then the next workout, 62 and a half. And the next workout, you know, 65 and, and so on and so forth. And then in a couple of months, you could be squatting well over 100, right? Mm -hmm. As long as you're eating enough and you're sleeping enough, there's no reason why you can't. Because you're young, you have, like, there, there's, you've got the testosterone to grow and get mm -hmm. stronger like that. And the same on your squat and the same on your deadlift. And that's the yeah. only real exercises they focus on. And then eventually you'll get to the stage where, right, I now have a 100K bench, 120 squat. And 160 deadlift. So when you get to that stage, you're not going to be able to add much without really eating a lot more food or sleeping mm -hmm. more. You're going to have to like change your workouts. You're going to have to maybe like lower, like you know, instead of doing three sets of five, do like one set of three. Like yeah. just change your numbers up and stuff. And that, like I have not got to that stage yet. So that's the kind of stage I want to get to. Like, but my squat and deadlift and bench since I've been followed starting strength has probably went up about 50 kilograms. Like, was there? But yeah, that's the, that, up up. but that, that's the thing like, a lot of people are missing. Like a lot of people forget that it's so important to eat healthy. Like that's yeah. like probably more important than actually like lifting weights and shit. Like eating healthy yeah. is like the the bog standard thing you need to do before if you want to fucking become say fit or grow grow yeah. grow in strength and shit. And a lot of people don't see that. People think people there's this like myth that you need to eat more regardless of what it is. Just eat more yeah. fatty food. Eat more fucking like carbs and shit. Not there. The more you eat, the more energy you're gonna have, and the more energy you can fucking like use during your fucking workout, which I think is a, a very misleading. Yeah, that's the yeah. problem. It's so much like because everyone's body type is so different, and that's so what works yeah. for one person isn't gonna isn't really gonna work for another person. It, it may work to a certain degree, but it won't, won't work the same level. And a lot of people think it's just one quick answer. And the bad thing about working out and staying fit and staying healthy, there's no quick answer. Like, and I think it's yeah, you're right with the body types because I I've learned a long time ago I do not have the body type to look like a bodybuilder, like I am genetically tall and lanky, thin, probably similar to yourself, yeah. So like to me, my body doesn't hold that much weight. Mm -hmm. So like, but I like I kind of like that now. I like being the guy in the gym. I know it sounds a bit weird, but the one that is squatting 120 kilograms, but the guy who looks way bigger than me is squatting like 40. Yeah, and I'm like, because I'm like. You know, I've worked hard to get there, but it doesn't necessarily reflect how I look in certain ways. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Because I genetically, I'm just not, I'm never going to be the small stocky kid. But there you go. You it's, then it's just the, that's the superficial element that mm -hmm. you, if you care about, then you care about. But if you don't, you care the fuck. You know, if you no. know, if you know that you can squat more than the fucking the best, like, the biggest guy in the gym, like that's 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 that in itself is enough for you to be fucking satisfied with your workout. Yeah. You know what I mean? But again, I, it all goes back to you, why you're working out for. If you're working out for yourself and internally, you, you want to be happy, you want to be fucking healthy, then they're it doesn't matter what anyone else is doing. Doesn't, doesn't matter, you know what I mean? But it, it is it is tough when you go to a fucking gym and there's guys, there's just, there's just these guys walk fucking with their tank tops. And they busy I, 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 if you're in a gym, I shouldn't see your nipples. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I just shouldn't see your nipples. Like, that's it, well, that's why? It. Why is your nipples out? It's not that, that's freezing here. The number one rule of the gym: if you're if yeah. you're working out and I can see your nipples, you're doing it wrong. You're doing yeah. it fucking wrong. I shouldn't see your nipples in the gym. I don't know what's going on? Is this California? <laughs> is this Venice Beach? <laughs> is this Glen Gormley? <laughs> it's fucking freezing outside. It's freezing. All right, that's episode 127. Podcasting.